following is a world-class Bullshitters exclusive. Star Wars on TV is still a foreign concept to me. I was 20 when The Clone Wars dropped, but even then Star Wars felt like it should be on the big screen. Now, many years later, Star Wars has a multitude of TV shows and they range from good to Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan left a bad taste in my mouth. It was a bad show. It was lore-breaking, the effects were shit, and the characters introduced in this show are the stuff of legend. For being terrible. No one in Andor is this terrible, except for Tim, but we'll talk about Tim later. Andor dropped its first three episodes this morning, well, yesterday when this video drops, it's Thursday, hello from the past. Andor is set five years before the events of the original Star Wars. It's a direct prequel to Rogue One, the best Disney Star Wars, but that's like calling Lena Dunham the prettiest woman in the Gundark contest. Apples and oranges here, folks. What's unique about the timeline of Andor is not a lot. In 2005, George Lucas announced a Star Wars TV show called Star Wars Underworld that would take place during the formation of the Empire and would deal with the seedy underbelly of Coruscant. Doing a little more research, or honestly just knowing most of this shit because at one time Star Wars was my favorite thing ever, I learned that Underworld shares quite a few similarities with Andor. It seems like the best stuff from Disney Star Wars is just rehashing some unmade Star Wars projects. Andor has three episodes out. I'm going to review them as one vlog, but come back each week to hear my reviews, and if you're watching, let me know what you think. So hit that subscribe button for that and a whole lot more. Oh, and while you're down there, check out the link for TNA. Tits and Art, or TNA, is my new annual project. It's a big, 11 by 17 full-color book busting out with beautiful women and beautiful art. Sign-ups are live now, and the campaign begins on September 9th. It's only live for 30 days, so I can guarantee delivery by Christmas. Sign up today, link in the description below. The opening to Andor is unlike Star Wars, and that's a good thing. The credits are a blink and you miss them moment, but then the interesting part begins. Andor starts like a cyberpunk noir. The synth music seems to be more at home in Stranger Things than it does in Star Wars, but I'm a fan. Star Wars has evolved in the music category over the last few years. The Mandalorian created a unique soundscape for the world, and Andor does that too. Maybe even better. I'll get this music talk out of the way early and finish with this. The music used to set the mood in this show absolutely works. It's different, but finally different means something good in Star Wars. Now that we got that praise out of the way, let's talk more about the show. So as you already know, the show follows Cassian Andor, the hero of Rogue One, on his journey to go from loser fuckboy to rebellion martyr. It's an arc we've already seen, but this is Star Wars and they retell the same stories over and over again, so what's new? Rogue One was the best Disney Star Wars movie by a lot. In hindsight, I forget about it because it didn't suck like the rest of them. In Rogue One, Cassian had the personality of a saltine cracker. Here, he's better. It's his own show, so I'd assume he'd improve, and I'm right. Diego Luna is a solid actor. I only know him as Tanoke, the guy from Itumama Tambien, who, well, if you know, you know. In Andor, Cassian Andor is fairly complex. The show isn't relying on the myth of Andor, since he doesn't have one. They're building him here, and that's refreshing. Cassian Andor is a womanizing loser who owes money all over town. He's not trusted, but he's loved. In the first episode, we see him investigating his missing sister at a brothel. Two cops, or the Star Wars equivalent, harass him outside. Andor goes Rambo on these guys and kills them both. Cassian is on the run, moving forward. The rest of the hero cast is made up of likable characters, except Tim. He's a twat. He rats out Cassian over some jealousy bullshit, and, well, that makes him a twat. I'll spare you a rundown of everyone, but Andor's surrogate mother was a standout. It's not like that's all there is to say. The characters are surprisingly interesting. We're three episodes in, and there's no Reva. I assume people will get upset that the bad guy is gay, but hey, diversity. While I need to see more, the villain here is an overachieving Imperial wannabe, which I like because his motivations make sense. His superior officer is near retirement and wants to let the death of those two cops go. But for Cyril Karn, that bad guy, his OCD or his undying devotion to the cause won't allow him to brush that aside. To him, he's doing what he thinks is morally right, which is interesting. He's absolutely the bad guy doing bad things, but he's not twirling his mustache. The depiction of violence and evil is not neutered. The Primor Authority, which I'm going to call Space Cops or Spops moving forward, aren't the Empire, but they work for them. They're shown to be the same fascistic bastards the Empire is. It's nice to see them operate this way, but I'm worried that because of today's climate, they're going to use the Spops or the Empire to mirror modern-day U.S. issues, and that's where I'll cash out. It hasn't happened yet, and I'm hoping it doesn't. I'd rather be entertained than angry any day of the week. But I also won't look the other way if they jam this crap into the show. This is Star Wars. Let me enjoy Star Wars. Don't try to show me how smart you are by putting deep messages into Star Wars. It's Star Wars. It's special. It's a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The world we see on screen is very well done. Obi-Wan looked like absolute shit. If you disagree, go to Lens Crafters. Those effects looked terrible. The blue screen was noticeable, and the locales were just Southern California with CGI tanks. It was lazy to the nth degree. 
Andor is different. Each location feels different. The inhabitants all dress very differently, yet all feel natural in their environments. There's a very interesting focus on class struggle in this show, and the dress is indicative of that. You can tell who the people are just by looking at them. It's such an important thing in art. The people in your world need to look like they live there and work there. The characters in Andor feel like they're doing something, not just standing around on a stage. The world is more than the characters. The locales are unique and very sci-fi. This isn't the lazy Obi-Wan approach. They built these sets. Everything feels lived in, like Star Wars. I wish they would have made this show instead of the sequel trilogy, but alas, that wasn't the case. I hope they can keep this level throughout the entire show. If you enjoy the look and feel of Rogue One, then you may enjoy these three episodes. The storytelling is solid too. Some of the flashbacks took me out of the flow of the story, but that was rare. The pace of the show is one of its strong points, because not a lot happens in these three episodes, and that's okay. It takes until episode three to get any real action, and what we do get is good. During the quieter moments, we get character building for Cassie and Andor, which I like because the guy was like a sugar packet. You can find one on every restaurant table in America. What's the big deal? If he was a product, he'd call him a cotton swab because Q-Tip is too hot of a brand name for Cassie and Andor. He wasn't special at all, and Disney knew that. After all of this, my official verdict on Andor is, wait and see. It's far too early to judge this show either way with this little out. The show is guaranteed to run two seasons, so until we get a clearer picture, that's the most honest answer I can give. Now to review these specific episodes I watched. I was entertained. I enjoyed them all. But I can't shake this feeling that the other shoe is about to drop. Until that Birkenstock hits the ground, I'm giving these three episodes the same score. I liked them. Until any modern politics pop up or any of that stupid shit Hollywood loves to put into their film materializes, I can't honestly judge that against the show yet. There's always a chance episode four is full of them and the show shits the bed. But unless you're going online reading up on this show, you'll never realize the creators hate you. They're a lot better at hiding it this time. When this season ends, I'll be doing a full in-depth review and addressing all of the points of the show then and there. But until then, join me next week where I review the fourth episode of Andor titled TBA. Ooh, I wonder what that means. So I wanted to go about this in a way that wouldn't spoil the show for those who want to watch it. And if you do want to watch it, hey, go ahead and tell me what you think down in the comments below. And if you're not interested in the show, tell me what you think in the comments below for anything else. I'm interested. I want to know. But I'm not going to put my lot in with this show yet. I'm not going to jump in and say Disney Star Wars is saved. But I am going to say it's a lot better than Obi-Wan. Thank God. Today's video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and my new book, Tits and Art. Tits and Art, or TNA, is my new annual project. It's a big 11 by 17 full color book busting out with beautiful women and beautiful art. Signups are live now and the campaign begins on September 9th. It's only live for 30 days so I can guarantee delivery by Christmas. Sign up today, link in the description below. Watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from world class bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from world class bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on world class bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So, folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no, they're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff. So if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason. And no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit, not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.